is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's episode, but if you can't tell, there's a lot of activity going on in the neighborhood right now. So hopefully it's not too loud, but I had to get out here and take advantage of this beautiful weather. There are people out mowing their lawns and raking leaves and blowing their leaves and kids are out playing and everybody's taking advantage of this beautiful weather because there might not be, there might not be too many more days like this because it's almost November and we're out in t-shirts. It's t-shirt weather here in Michigan in almost November. It's crazy. But that being said, I hope you guys are gonna enjoy your time with me in the garden today. I'm really excited about what we're gonna talk about because we get asked a lot about crops that have to be pulled prematurely and is there anything that I can do? It's usually worded something along the lines of, Luke, we got a frost coming or there's a threat of a freeze. I've gotta pull my plants out of my garden to kind of just get it ready for winter. But there's still, there's still crops that might be ready to harvest and I don't want to pull them out, but I think I have to because you know, there's a frost or a freeze coming. And so is there anything that I can do? And the answer to that is yes. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. We're going to talk about these crops that you can actually harvest if they're not completely ready to harvest yet. You can harvest them and actually take them inside, put them in your basement, put them in your garage or you know, a pole barn or a shed or something like that and something that's gonna be protected from the cold weather. And you can actually hang them up and let them finish ripening. All right, the first crop that you can harvest prematurely and take inside to finish maturing are beans. Now this is a great crop to finish maturing inside because it, uh, they do it so easily. Now you're not going to get the fresh snap beans. So if you're growing like a Blue Lake bush bean and you're looking for that, mm, that incredible snap bean, you're not gonna get that. What you are gonna get is you're gonna get shelling beans. So you can do this with things like black beans, kidney beans, pinto beans, garbanzo beans. You can even do this with Blue Lake bush beans as well, but you're not gonna harvest the snap beans, you're gonna harvest the seeds inside. And so beans are a great crop to do this with because of the fact that once they're at a certain stage in their kind of their, their life cycle, once the seeds inside of the pods have actually formed, the pods have turned spongy and um, and have started to kind of harden the skin up a little bit, they can basically be hung, uh, hung up in a basement, uh, a, a carport or anything like that, um, in a well-ventilated area, and the seeds inside will actually begin to dry. And then when the plant is completely dry, just pull off the dry beans, shuck them, and you get the seeds inside. Very, very simple. Now I can already hear the questions, Luke, how do I hang dry these? Very, very simple. All you do is just take a bundle of say five or 10 plants, wrap the roots with some jute or some twine, and you're just gonna wrap them up and then you can hang them. So very, very simple. Now you're not going to get every single bean to dry out and be ready to harvest. Some of the more young beans that just formed, those are not gonna actually form because there's no seeds inside yet. They're still too immature. Um, things like this, not a chance, but beans like this, Absolutely. A lot of these beans, I'd say probably 80% of these beans are actually gonna give me uh, viable dry seeds inside. It's just the pods themselves are not even close to dry yet because the plant is still somewhat alive. So um, we're just gonna take these inside and that way they don't get frostbitten. They can just dry inside, dry uh, in our basement, um, or you can throw them in a shed, like I said, just someplace well ventilated. And in about a month and a half, two months time, when the plant is completely brittle and dry and the seed pods themselves are dry, you can shuck them and take the seeds out. All right, and the second crop you can hang dry to finish ripening are actually peppers. Now you don't have to dry them like beans. The really nice thing is that a lot of these peppers will actually finish ripening when you take them inside. A lot of these peppers that are just kind of yellowish green, or you know, if you're harvesting like a red pepper that's like a greenish red, right? If they're starting to turn, a lot of these peppers, if just given the opportunity, will finish ripening. So you can eat them fresh, just as if you would have, uh, just as if you would have eaten them fresh out in the garden. The only difference is you're not going to lose them to a frost or a freeze. But you just simply take your bundles; it's that simple, and simply hang them up. Now, if you want to dry your peppers, they can be dried as well. Very, very simply. Just simply take them and then uh, and then just string them up like that. Let them dry right on the plant. People have been doing this in Mexico and Central America for thousands of years, and they're actually really, really easily done because uh, all of the moisture, all of the, the, you know, the, the juices still in the plant, all of that is gonna flow down because of gravity, and it's actually gonna flow 
into these fruits, it's gonna finish ripening them, it's gonna give them better flavor, and a lot of people prefer hang drying their peppers like this on the plant, and then when the peppers are completely dry, you just pull them off. I also know that a lot of people, they like to, uh, they like to uh, you know, take their, their pepper plants indoors for the winter. Now you can do that as well, we have videos on that, but either way, in, in order to take the plant indoors for the winter, you're still gonna have to take off all the peppers because you can't take the plant indoors with all the peppers inside. It's too much stress and you'll end up killing it. So by clipping off all these branches, you can still take the plant indoors, save it for next year, throw it underneath a grow light, and take all these branches and hang dry them. So there you go, there's plant number two. All right, now the third plant is very, very obvious, but a lot of people actually ask about it, and that is herbs. Herbs can be hung dried so easily. All you have to do is simply take the plant, snap it off, and just basically tie it up with some jute or some string, just like you would any other plant that we're talking about, and just hang it up. Now what you're gonna do is you're essentially gonna dry these leaves right on the plant. And then when the leaves are completely dry, you can crush them with your hands or just kind of grate them away, and they're gonna drop away from the stems, leaving you with very, very dry herbs. The really nice thing about this is you can harvest a ton of herbs all at once without sitting here, picking off each leaf, taking them inside, drying them on a flat surface, one layer thick, um, because you need to do that, otherwise they'll actually start to mold and the moisture and stuff will really kind of get to them and you'll reduce the freshness. But with this, you're going to do, uh, probably the, uh, the best thing you can do for yourself is you're actually gonna hang the whole plant. So you're gonna save time and you're gonna get a higher quality finished product. You can do this with things like sage, thyme, basil, oregano, uh, rosemary. It's super simple to do with literally any herb like that, and uh, you can hang dry them. Now, there's a few crops that are kind of difficult, things like thyme, uh, or things like parsley. Things like parsley are kind of tricky because they don't actually have a plant. They're more or less just like uh, kind of stemmy. Those are kind of tricky to, to hang dry, but nonetheless, you can still give it a shot. But any herbs can be hung dry like this, and they do very, very well. So give herbs a try. We actually have a lot of videos on hang drying herbs, and uh, I'd recommend kind of checking out further to kind of see what the finished product looks like. But very simple, and you don't need things like a dehumidifier either. Just let nature do the work. All right, the fourth crop that you can hang dry is corn. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can actually hang dry corn, but it's very simple, and a lot of cultures actually do that because sometimes corn, if you're using it for sweet corn and fresh eating corn, won't work, just like green beans. You need to be actually harvesting the, the dry kernels, uh, the dry seeds from the corn. But in order to shuck it, you need to actually have it be bone dry. And a lot of times, if you leave your corn out, what will happen is animals will get to it. Raccoons, uh, mice, things like that, squirrels will get into the corn. So harvest it when, it's, when the plant is nice and, you know, nice and brown, starting to die, and bring it inside and just let it finish. Just hang it up and it will dry so much better because you're gonna get all that beautiful air circulation. It's gonna to help to dry out those seeds. And then when the plant is completely bone dry and those cobs are nice and brittle and the seeds are starting to kind of, uh, kind of spread out and, uh, and dehydrate, that's when you can take them and shuck them with your hands and get those nice dry seeds. You can use them for seed next year or you can grind them down and make things like grits and cornmeal um, and, and masa and stuff like that for making tortillas popcorn even. So the uses are endless, but you can hang dry them very, very simply. The fifth crop that you can harvest and hang dry is actually things like wheat. So your grains, things like amaranth, things like sorghum, things like wheat, you can hang dry those and you should be doing that because wheat and sorghum and a lot of your grains, the seeds and the seed heads have a lot of surface area. And if you just leave them outside, Cold, damp weather will lead to rotten mold, which will completely spoil your harvest. So take them, chop them, bundle them, and hang dry them. And then make sure, make sure with grains, make sure that you put something underneath, like a tarp, to catch the grain, uh, the grain seeds as they drop, because a lot of them will start to drop off the plant as they dry. So just a quick little tip so you don't lose your harvest, but uh, very, very simple and uh, super easy to do. All right, and the sixth and final crop that you can actually hang dry is right here, and it's gonna be kind of a controversial one. People are gonna say, well, why? I can just take it inside and let it ripen on my countertop. Yes, you can. But ask anyone that's actually hung dried tomatoes and they will tell you that uh, you know, hanging them up to finish ripening will give you a far better result 
far better flavor and will buy you just a little bit more time for the fruit to actually ripen. And hang it upside down just like that, just like you would a pepper. Now you can eat these fresh. Now you would not wanna let these completely dry on the plant for like sun-dried tomatoes, that wouldn't be good. You're gonna hang ripen these just like you would your peppers and once they turn a beautiful shade of red or yellow, or orange, whatever color they're supposed to be, pick them and eat them. Anything else that turns you know, mushy or, or moldy, things like that, you're going to get some, you know, some very immature tomatoes that just won't ripen. Plain and simple, they just won't ripen. Those are ones you can make that decision of, you know, should I use them for fried green tomatoes or should I just throw them in the compost pile? And that decision is up to you. But your tomatoes are gonna ripen a whole lot better on the plant, on the vine, hung, you know, hung up in a, in, a, in a basement or some places well ventilated than just taking them and putting them on your countertop. And the reason why is because all, this, all the sugars and all the, you know, the water that's still in this plant can and, and will give these fruits an extra week to two weeks to finish up ripening rather than just putting them on your countertop where there's nothing else going into this. It is going to start ripening. So it is a super simple way. Just again, take your bundles, wrap them up with twine or jute, hang them from a, uh, hang them from a rafter someplace well ventilated, and they're going to finish ripening. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really hope that you'll try some of these and let me know which ones you've tried in the comments box down below and, uh, and how it turned out for you. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye. Mm. Oh, that's good.